Hello, and welcome to the New York Jewish Film Festival. The festival is presented by the Jewish, Jewish Museum and Film at Lincoln Center annually in January. I'm Indigo Sparks, member of the selection team, and I'm so excited to welcome you to this discussion of the 2022 feature film, Baron. It's a story of love and frailty, uh, perdition, tradition, evolution, and I'm here with the writer and director, Rabbi Mordecai Vardy. Um, I understand you're coming to us from Israel, so thank you so much for being here. Thank you for accepting my film to your film festival. It's a great honor for me. Uh, well, it was a beautiful film. Um, so, so incredibly touching and um, very complicated subject matter. Um, it, I think when we all saw it, we were kind of just like, well, let's take a step back and really talk about what's going, what's going on here. Um, it's, there's so many layers to all of the different things that are happening, not just to the main character, but the stories that are happening to the people around her. Um, so with Baron, I know it's based on a true story. Um, could you start by telling us how you came to make the film and what kind of drew you to telling these stories? Okay, so I was inspired by um, Q&A, you know, in, in the Jewish uh, books, we have the, the Q&A genre of rabbis who are getting questions about things that they have to solve. And it was in the 19th, in the middle of the 19th century, where a rabbi in Germany got a question from a rabbi from Hungary about uh, a very a very hard situation when a guest is uh, coming to a house you know in the Jewish tradition if you meet someone in the synagogue and he doesn't have any place to be so you invite him and he was there uh, for Shabbat and um, in the after the dinner when he was alone with the young woman who's um, husband went uh, for business and she was left with his parents and when they're left alone uh, he tells her uh, his secrets that he is Eliyahu Anavi, the prophet Eliyahu and she uh, believes him and in the middle of the night he wakes her up and he said that she had to give birth of the Messiah, the Mashiach and her husband is cannot do it, so he she have to do it with him. And uh, of course, uh, she said, "Okay, if the if uh, the history of the Jewish people is on her shoulders, and she can ha give birth to the Mashiach, so uh, she accepted it. And when the husband came home, and she told him all the story, and then they, they understood that she was uh, uh, she was actually having uh, relations, endemic relations with somebody who is not his husband. Now, in the Jewish uh, law, there is a question if she can stay with her husband when she did this with consent. And uh, the rabbi in Germany said that uh, you know, in in it was very early, early in the history that a rabbi in the 19th century decided that when you are standing before an authority that you cannot resist, it considered rape. So the woman, she is not blamed. There is not a blame on the woman because she was standing before someone that she cannot resist if he's if she really believed that he is a Liyawa Navi. So, uh, the, so he said that they can stay husband and wife and she doesn't have a blame. Now, um, this uh, issue that rabbis use their authority to abuse women, uh, I didn't know how much it will be actual because nowadays in Israel we have some cases, some that rabbis really did things 
and it, uh, it's on the headlines of uh, the news. So for me as a rabbi, it was very important to put it on the table and to say we have to stop this phenomenon of uh, women that standing before religious authority and they say they know that it's not right to do it, but you can you cannot tell the rabbi what is right and what is wrong because he knows the best. So it was important for me to put it uh, in the middle of the drama. Well, yeah, thank you for sharing that. It's, you know, unfortunately kind of uh, in the era of Me Too, but even before that, we have seen a lot of these situations before. And some of us, you know, have friends or family that have been in situations where they're with somebody who is in a position of power and that power is used to abuse. Um, and I think especially in the context of like being with somebody in your religious community, right? And kind of the wires being crossed about purpose and reason and duty um, as far as your faith. Um, it becomes like a really kind of nuanced and I can imagine hopefully less tricky now, but at the time in which this story was happening and its originality, like very complicated to try to decipher. Um, I appreciated you showing the three male rabbis discussing, kind of going through that questioning in the film, the um, what is the legitimacy of her perspective and um, kind of the rape that she had just experienced. Um, and yeah, I guess, why did it feel important to to kind of show that? Um, do we feel like those conversations are maybe still happening in a similar way or I don't know, what do you think? I wanted to say that it's really a, a hard question because uh, from the outside when you see, you see that she doesn't resist and she could resist. Mm. Uh, and really in the in the history of the Q and A in the books. Not all the rabbi accepted this uh, uh, this kind of decision that it considered rape. It's not so simple. So I wanted to to bring that that debate about this issue and to see how complicated it is. And for the uh, for the Israeli law, it took uh, many years. I think. Only in uh, 1980 that they uh, decided that um, using authority uh, against women considered rape. Uh, so in the Jewish law, it was uh, the rabbis discussed it even in uh, 1850. So uh, it's not so easy, but really, yes, I wanted uh, in the way I shoot this scene, I wanted the, the audience and also myself to feel that, well, we wanted a woman to be in the room, another woman to be in the room, not only her standing before three rabbis and uh, 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 a rabbinit, uh, a rabbitson, a, a woman was missing there so she she can have an eye contact with a woman in this uh, hard situation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the women in the film, I think all, or I, I should say in Feige's life and in her in her world, um, such very different approaches, I think, to her and how she should or shouldn't be speaking about the situation. Um, her mother-in-law obviously being kind of the main person who she is uh, moving through this situation with or at times, you know, not feeling super supported by her. Um, yeah, I guess, um, can you talk to me a little bit more about uh, about her mother-in-law and kind of um, kind of her balancing you know, setting up these relationships and also trying to kind of um, mediate the relationship between her son and and her daughter-in-law as well during this complicated situation. 
Well, I think uh, she is the wisest uh, character in all this uh, story. But she is, uh, in one hand, she wants to support her daughter-in-law. And in the other situation, she just wants to protect her son. And she is overprotecting her son because that's why he cannot leave the house. And uh, in the end of the film, he has to... To decide uh, if he wants to stuck with his mother or he want to go uh, with his wife um so yes it's it's a complicated uh, um character and that's that's how i wanted her to be because yeah. she is sometimes you like her and sometimes you think think that she's uh, over yes over protecting her son and she doesn't let him go yeah and she is she is um, sometimes using uh, manipulate the uh, ways to to achieve her goals but she have good intentions i think in my story except one uh, crook all of them have good intentions but you know in the reality in life Many people have good intentions, but not uh, good uh, good doing. Yeah, yeah. The the impact ends up being very different, maybe than the actual intention. Um, I want to uh, dive into a little bit of some of uh, just the symbolism. Um, and some of kind of like the ritualistic and more traditional things that we see in the film, um, starting with the significance of the shofar, like the whole idea is that this rabbi is a professional, he's really good at blowing the shofar, and he is going to, like, he is, because of that reason, like, he's able to bring in new aspects to this fertility challenge that um, Fagy and her husband are having. Um, for those of us who aren't familiar, can you just talk about the significance of that horn? Yes, well, the shofar, we blow the shofar in the most holy, um, holy time in the world, in, in the, in the, in the year, in Rosh Hashanah, when we're blowing the shofar, it's, it's a very high, um, uh, uh, sacred time when we just, uh, you know, the shofar was, uh, in the in the Sinai Mount when we got the Torah, this was the 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 soundtrack, the the sound of the shofar, and it's a very and I wanted to show that uh, sometimes we can take the most holy things and put them in the most low level, take them to the most le low level and evil. Mm -hmm. So uh, religion really is a uh, is the um, I can say it, it can bring life it can bring faith it can bring um, a very good uh, to, to people but when you you use the holy things to to make evil so this is this is what I wanted to show the the yeah I I Definitely felt because for me, I was a little. I was like, okay, maybe I need I need to look into this a little bit more. But this seems to be very important, and it seems to be on par with, you know, um, somebody who's supposed to be respected in their community. You know, bringing in like these really important practices to someone's home. So to kind of see it twisted on its head like that, yeah, I definitely was a little caught by surprise in the way he was kind of using it. You know, as like a manipulation. Yes. Um, one of the places that both Feggy and Naftali would kind of have their escape and kind of run to was this forest. Um, and I was just curious about that location and that site and um, yeah, what, what that kind of meant for both of them and for you creating the film. Yes, well, in the in the Boislav tradition, uh, the place where a man can talk to God uh, is... Uh, in the forest where with the plants and the with the flowers where the, the place that the civilization didn't touch it 
and they are alone there. Uh, so it, it's also connecting to nature, to the nature like it was created. And this is the place where I, I can have quiet from all the, the community and all the civilization. And I'm just the me and God talking there. Uh, so, uh, uh, yes, I want to, uh, to bring them out to the, to the, place to the nature or the place is uh, pure and and you can you can uh, in a clean way just you and heaven mm. also i wanted oh. to say that that uh, al although the my inspiration was uh, with the story of a rabbi abusing a woman I thought that what uh, interests me is relationship between the couple. Mm -hmm. I, I asked myself, okay, so the rabbi said that yes, you you can go on with your uh, with your family, but how the the man is reacting? Because also he was hurt in the second degree by this um, event of rape. So he really wants, but he can't. Until yeah. until she she's in a hard situation, he cannot find a way to uh, to solve his uh, emotions with her. Yeah, he's got a real. Um, I mean, like you said, he's he's affected by this um, kind of secondhandedly, and he kind of has his own kind of scar. Like, I mean, he went away and came back and tragedy you know so you see him and you want him I think so much as a viewer to just like hop on board support her you know like stand by her um and you know from a woman's perspective watching it you you want you would you would want that like you know for him to be close and to feel safe and when he kind of looks at her and is like I can't even touch you you know I can't yes hear you I, I wanted the audience when they see this film to decide that no matter what they will um, they will support their spouses. Yeah, yeah, and it's so much easier said than done. I think they're both also so young to be dealing with these, you know, real life real life issues. Um, not that it gets easier as you get older, but. It's just they're already trying to navigate love and and the understanding of of unionship. Um, so you definitely seeing that play out, and then towards the end, even um, this movie has a lot of plot twists. But even even towards the very end, um, yes, will not you, make. Uh, yes, <laughs> um, it. I think you keep you keep seeing kind of like that balance of their relationship and kind of who is, um, they're saying a lot without saying very much all of the time. Yes, I think it's it's really, it, they really love each other and they have to, to go, um, they have to solve this obstacle that stops them and this, this wall that grows up between them. And uh, without making any spoilers, but uh, um, I think uh, the, I, I try in the end to that they can um, they can walk over and uh, solve the things somehow. Yeah. So have you? I'm curious to um, kind of what some of the reactions have been to folks uh to the film from folks in your community or um i know you mentioned earlier that some of the some of these actual issues um have been a little bit more have been broadcasted a little bit more widely in israel on the news and things of that and things of that uh sort but is this kind of um perpetration or maybe like complicated uh situation something that's really talked about so yeah I was just curious about the reactions to the film so far <laughs> yes I also was curious and uh, I didn't know how people will accept it especially religious people because yeah. 
it uh, like um, have the 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 laundry out yes but but uh, but most of the the places i show the film the reaction is that this is a very important film and uh, it's not uh, a popcorn and coca cola uh, film but uh, and it's not easy to to see the film but uh, people uh, had the feeling that they had a rich meal of emotions in the film and they they say most of the time they said that it's important and uh, now i i'm going from community to community with the film to showing it in communities and and it's from uh, one to another they're asking to bring the film to the to their communities all over israel yeah. from the north yeah. to the south and uh, i i really get uh, very very strong reactions that uh, people um, can identify and think that it's very important that uh, this issue come mm -hmm. to raise up in the film. That's wonderful. Um, congratulations on that. Um, and also I try to, to and it, it, that it will not be a very graphic, how do you say? Uh, when yeah. the, the, uh, I, 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 uh, I made this film, I try to make it very gentle, very, uh, Yes, not provocative. Mm. Yeah, no, it's done. It is done quite tastefully, and um, I think it's the emo like, yeah, it's not. It's not the graphic nature of something like that happening. It is, in this instance, very much so about the emotional toil that it takes <laughs> on yeah. not just the person who is affected, but um, or who it happens to, but by everybody around them, the family who is affected and kind of the, I think just the overall, it's like the embarrassment and kind of the shame of the situation, not just for the person, but I think especially um, in in uh, Fagan and Naftali's community, it's, you know, how public do we want this to be? Do we want to go to the police? Do we not want many people to know? Like kind of... Yes trying to figure out the pomp and circumstance around this thing and and um how much of it they want to share with yes yes right. without being judged or feeling casted out or yeah um all right well i'll just you know i'll ask one more question um in the making of this film um this was your first feature, yes? Was yes. Uh, well, I started writing this film fifteen years ago, wow. and uh, I I couldn't reach the the budget to make it. So in the meantime, I made documentaries, and really, I I felt that documentaries is very important for me. So uh, this film have had to to wait until uh, I have the opportunity to produce it. Yeah. But uh, I really, um, fiction films are, yes, I I want to make more. Maybe this film will give me the, the, the opportunity to make some more because uh, I think in all, uh, all over Israel and in festivals, I, they regard this film as a good film. Yes, it's, it's great. I mean, I'm, I'm, when I, had heard that I was a little I was like okay wow so you know but I also think there's a certain aspect of when you shoot documentaries that you're, you're kind of if things are everything is happening in real time right like you kind of have what you have and you kind of have to keep moving um after you you're interviewing folks and there's an aspect and element um of the truth that is so poignant in a really good documentary that I love um and I felt like I don't know, it feels to me like some of the practice and shooting documentaries kind of spilled over into Baron, so that you still kind of have that essence of like listening to everyone's stories. And I don't know, you get a full picture of the situation um, in a way that was that I felt like worked really well here. Um, but what do you, my last question will be if you, 
as an artist, um, what you feel like you've learned the most from this process of Baron, this 15 year process of trying to bring this film to fruition, um, just like what this specific project has taught you. Yes, well, it's it's very different from documentary because in documentary it's very intimate. I'm going to shoot. Uh, I'm shooting with my daughter. She also is a filmmaker. So mm-hmm. it's like a family work. And and uh, in the fiction film, you have a uh, dozen of of people on the set, and it's you have to to collaborate with so many people and to guide the actors that are not really religious and bring their mind in and the emotions into these uh, characters that are not themselves. So it was very important. And I saw that really when when someone understand the 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 humanity of of uh, of the character he have to to play, it doesn't matter if if he doesn't have the background in his biography, he can the the actors, most of them are, are secular and they got into the, the story and they could bring out the emotions that are, you know, universal. And also when when I show this film in Estonia and in India, very different uh, cultures and they could uh, could understand and could, could communicate and identify with so I, I I understood that no matter uh, what what world you're bringing, if you can uh, bring the feelings and you can touch people, so no matter what uh, culture they are coming from, they can identify and can can bring it to their own world. Oh, that's beautiful. Um, well, thank you so much for being here and for talking about your beautiful film. Um, I think I'm going to wrap up here and thank you for joining us. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for a conversation that we could uh, go a little bit deeper. Yeah, (laughs) no problem. (laughs) Thank you. Thank you very much.